video at Fall and Flower Farm. Today what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of a tour of what my current status is at the farm. If you can see, I still have a lot of snow. Um, this is eventually going to be full of flowers and it's only about 30 degrees outside as I'm making this video. I'm very eager to get out here and to start digging, but unfortunately the ground under my feet is still very much frozen. So a little bit of an overview. I don't have a lot of space to grow, as you can see, and I try to make the most out of it by one, doing some things like succession planting and intercropping. So in between some of my flowers, I try to plant other things with different timings or that are mutually beneficial to each other. Always trying to keep as much plants in the ground as possible at all times. In my space, I have about three foot wide beds and they are about 30 feet long. And I can have about five or six of those. And again, they will be behind me in this space. I live in a rural part of the state of Vermont. My zone is 4B, and our last frost date is about mid-May um, most years, sometimes the end of May um, when I'm not as lucky. And it's only March, so most of my growing right now is inside. However, I do have some sweet peas that are growing in my garage right now that could probably be out, outside if needed, but um, I like to keep them a little bit more protected until some of our extreme weather events have ended. So my sweet pea setup is nothing fancy. Um, I use these six inch pots. I planted about 10 seeds per pot and I have about 12 different varieties of sweet peas. I keep them here in my garage because my garage is slightly heated to about 45 degrees. Um, and sweet peas really like the cold temperature. I have this weird funky light thing that I have had for years and it's not ideal, but I also try to keep the garage door open for some natural light for them when the temperatures allow that to happen. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick update on that. I do have, to, I do throw some cinnamon on top of these to help because they do stay pretty moist. There's not a lot of heat. So I, I do have a little bit too much water down there on the bottom. I hardly ever, um, because of the temperature in here, need to water them. I probably water them maybe once a week compared to my soil blocks inside, which I'm there daily. Um, I've had some mixed germination rates. Um, the stuff, like I saved these seeds from last year and they're doing really well. Um, some of the new varieties that I got are not germinating as well, um, but I'm hopeful that I'll at least get a couple plants of them so I can save those seeds for next year. Sweet peas really are um, one of my favorite flowers to grow, and they did so well for me last year. I'm really hoping that now that I'm expanding my sweet peas this year, um, they'll really just thrive and give me so many good smells and pretty colors to look at. Hey everyone. So as I'm here starting my seeds that are about six weeks from our last frost, I wanted to go over some of the procedures and things that I do to get here. How do I know what seeds to start? How do I know when to start them? And how do I know where they're going to be in my garden this summer? So I'm going to take you through um, my spreadsheet that I make and that I try to live by and follow. Um, to be prepared and some ways that I try to navigate wanting to buy all the seeds all the time. Up on top here, I have the approximate dimensions of my garden and each box represents one foot. I use this to give me a rough estimate of where I'm going to plant my different starts um, once I'm able to get them in the ground. Note, um, the colors don't mean anything at this point. Um, however, I have used them um, to label things like timing and to label things um, based on different characteristics that I wanted to note. 
However, this year um, I haven't really had the time to do that and I just picked some colors that I enjoy. So at the top of my area for growing, I'm going to put sunflowers and have some extra space for some sunflower succession planting. Um, that's something new I'm trying this year, so I was trying to be intentional about where to plant them. And as you go down, so I have five three-foot rows, and um, over on the left, um, I have some, this is where I'm going to put all my sweet peas. I'm planning for two-foot paths. I also am going to do cosmos and zinnias in the next row. Um, and then I'm doing some dahlias from seed this year, and I'm giving them this much space and some other random types of plants are in these other places. Um, it's hard to know where um, to put things necessarily. I'm still new and like the best pl things to put next to each other. I haven't got that far. Um, some of these things are new for me. Some of them are not. Um, and I think I have something that I can't plant right here. So I left so that a little bit shorter because I need to go outside and actually measure um, that again for my planning. So that's just like my general overview. This does change. Um, and I just use it to make sure I have enough space to put all the seeds that I'm buying. Which then brings me here. Um, so let me zoom in a little. I just like do the type of seed that I'm planting, if I'm planting it by seed. I haven't even filled out the days to maturity of anything yet. Um, and I try to track what sources. Um, on good years, I separate each row by the types of varieties. However, for timing so far this year, I've just put the type of flower. A lot of the things I'm growing, like my Cosmos, I just had a mixed bag of Cosmos. Uh, I'm not separating them by color. And same with my Zinnia. I mostly have a mixed bag once I start those. So I'm just kind of trying some things out. Gives me an idea of how many I've planted. And then knowing how many, like how close I'm going to put things and looking at my spreadsheet on this one, I can tell like, okay, like I have three feet by one, two, three, four, five, six. So like I have a certain amount of feet that I can use to actually plant these things. Like will my spacing work? Can I actually plant um, the amount of plants that I'm starting? So that's really how I organize my spreadsheets. Um, and this really helps me narrow down the seeds that I'm starting and can grow. So this is the first place I go to when I'm on the website looking at all these gorgeous seeds to try. I first make sure that I have room in the garden that I'm planning to put them um, if I'm going to try that out this year. So it's just it really helps me stay organized and find what works for my space and um, kind of helps narrow down those impulse buys. I hope that this helps you um, with your planning. And if you need any help, so I use Google Sheets to make this. And I find it really helpful, especially as I'm a new flower farmer, you know, it's only my second year. This really helps um, me stay organized and try not you know, there's so many types of flowers that I have not grown before. So it's really tempting to buy all of them. And this really helps me have a larger focus on things I know that I can grow and then stick with smaller sections of the stuff that I'm not sure of. Mm -hmm.